Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. If you're looking for a fish which will try to shank any new additions using the blade at the base of its tail, the powder blue tang might just be the fish for you. And if that intro doesn't get you to click that like button and subscribe to the channel, I don't know what will. To many of you it will come as no surprise that this video is very similar to my Achilles tang video, as they are both very similar fish, having both the same level of aggression and similar sickly disposition. Before we get to that however, I just wanted to inform you of something. Over the last 11 years I've collected over 120 different types of coral, and I thought maybe it's time to start sharing some of them with you guys. At the moment this is just an idea, but I would like to start selling some of my coral frags online. Obviously it's just the UK, but if enough people in the UK go to my new website www prestigereef.co.uk and sign up to the newsletter, it will show me that people are genuinely interested and I might try to make this a reality. I'll also leave a link in the description box below for you. Anyway, back to today's video. As I mentioned, when it comes to keeping a powder blue tang, they can be just as frustrating as many other members of the Acanthus family, as the majority of them have a lower survival rate than average. I've had first hand experience with several members of this family, and it's time for the powder blue tang to get the prestige reef treatment. These fish are easy to recognise with their light blue oval bodies adorned with a yellow dorsal fin, creating a striking contrast. For years I wanted a powder blue tang, however I managed to resist the temptation because of the horror stories and emaciated specimens which I kept seeing in the shops. This is something I've got pretty good at over the years. Whenever there's a fish which has a terrible reputation, I'm always more than happy to wait until another reefer is shutting down their tank and is selling one. Obviously you might have to wait years to get the right fish, but it significantly increases your chance of success. Their poor survival rate is directly a result of two major issues, the first being that they're rather partial to the occasional zero calorie diet plan, where they would rather starve than eat literally anything. And secondly, they are a magnet for various diseases, but especially white spot. Trust me, I swear sometimes mine gets it just to annoy me. This fish really should only be purchased if you're willing to plan your tank around it. They need a considerable sized tank with selective tank mates. A rectangle tank is a better choice than a cube, as it gives them a larger swimming distance. Something which I feel is often overlooked is that they need a tank with lots of flow. In the wild they come from an oxygen rich environment, therefore we should try to replicate this in the home aquarium with multiple powerheads. As I mentioned, just keeping them alive isn't where their problems stop. They are notorious for being very aggressive and once established it's not unusual for them to try to kill any new tank mates. I was lucky at first, she appears to be pretty peaceful, but as she's getting older she's beginning to show her dark side and is becoming slightly more problematic with new additions. When selecting a fish, only select one which is actively swimming. Inspect them closely for any signs of disease and ensure that you see them feeding ferociously at the shop first. This last bit is the key to your success. Assuming you find a specimen which ticks all these boxes, I still strongly advise that you quarantine this species. This gives you a chance to monitor its behaviour, while also allowing the fish to acclimate to life in captivity in the peace and comfort of an empty tank. It also gives you the chance to offer a variety of foods which the fish can test at its own pace without any competition. This is important as these fish can be extremely finicky feeders, and will go on hunger strike at the drop of a hat. A large tank and getting them to eat more than one thing is key, and if one day it decides it's not interested in one type of food, you have a range of other options to try. This will also provide the fish with a more nutritious diet, which will further strengthen their immune system. Mine is willing to eat different types of pellet and flake foods, and will demolish a sheet of nori in a matter of minutes. On the opposite end of the scale though, originally she wouldn't touch any form of frozen food at all. Fish can and do learn to accept different types of food. Patience, and in some case tricking them is a good place to start. Over time, this fish will become quite bold, and even tame, with mine being more than happy to take food right out of my hands, and occasionally will even let me stroke her. Plenty of live rock is a must, as this fish will cruise the rockwork all day picking at algae. 
Please be aware that when you purchase this fish, a white spot outbreak is virtually unavoidable for the average aquarist, but don't panic. Once a fish has developed white spot, you need to decide when the appropriate time to act is. Stress causes the mucus layer the fish produces to become thinner, allowing the parasite to attach. Removing the fish from the display tank can be incredibly stressful, which in my opinion can cause more harm than good sometimes. For this reason, minor outbreaks on this fish aren't too much of a worry, and it isn't uncommon for her to have a few little white spots every now and again. At first I used to panic, but over the years I've learnt to read her condition pretty well, and I know if it's time to take action. Before I got her, she was in captivity with a fellow reefer for two years, and on two occasions in his care, I saw her literally covered in white spot. Amazingly, she recovered on her own without any medication, according to him, just by using an increased feeding schedule. The other fish in the tank didn't show any signs of infection either. At the time, this was a surprise to me. Despite being in the hobby for many years, I always assumed that without copper, white spot was a death sentence. Even after all these years, I'm still learning new things on a regular basis, which is one of the best parts of this hobby. It's important to stay open-minded though, as that is how we all develop and grow. This isn't me advising you to do nothing. I would be the first person to remove all the rockwork for a sick fish, and this is something which I actually did once to save Lola my purple tang. But at the time, the Grim Reaper was clearly coming for her. I'm merely pointing out that removing a fish from the display tank is not only stressful for the sick fish, but it can also be stressful for the other tank inhabitants as well. So in answer to the question, do you really want a powder blue tang? This fish can be a nightmare to keep. They're prone to disease, hunger strikes, and random bouts of thuggish aggression. However, if you're willing to put in the time and effort to create the optimum environment, they can be a brilliant show fish which stands out above the rest. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. Don't forget to check out my website. And if you did enjoy it, why not click that like button and subscribe to the channel. Have a good week and I'll see you next time. As always, I just want to say a massive thank you to the people that support the channel on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of what you do with regards to keeping this channel going. You've all been brilliant. Thank you.